renovated Boardwalk Convention Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey for another edition of World Championship Boxing. Tonight, future Hall of Famer Evander Holyfield takes on fellow former heavyweight champ Hasim Rahman in a matchup critical to the careers of both men. With heavyweights dominating the boxing news these days, we bring you a compelling crossroads matchup between two of the division's biggest names this side of Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson. The incomparable Evander Holyfield, now 39 years old, tries to keep alive his dream of again winning the undisputed heavyweight title in a bout against a dangerous and equally desperate former champ, Hasim Rahman, who, like Holyfield, looks to punch his way back into the title picture. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Atlantic City for this special night on World Championship Boxing. Already you've enjoyed the 30-minute countdown to Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson next week in Memphis. This is a pivotal month in the heavyweight division. Tonight, as the stakes have already been articulated here, Hasim Rahman against Evander Holyfield here in Atlantic City. One man will move forward. One man will step further back. Next week, Lewis against Tyson. There's already been a lot said, and much more will be said in the next seven days for sure before we're there in Memphis next Saturday night live pay-per-view. And then on the 29th of this month, back here in Atlantic City, rapidly rising top contender regarded by many as the heir apparent to the title, Vladimir Klitschko of the Ukraine will face his toughest test so far in the person of durable, tough, American heavyweight Ray Mercer, a man who gave both Holyfield and Lewis all they could handle in his battles with them. So let's get it started with the expertise of two-time former heavyweight champion George Foreman. And George, uh, 11 years ago on this same piece of turf, you fought against Evander Holyfield, who was regarded by at, at that time as uh, too small to be a top-notch legitimate heavyweight. He'd already won the title. He showed his bravery against you. Could you have foreseen that 11 years later at 39, he'd still be around making a mark? In the heavyweight division, you can almost bet on it. If you're a young champion, you're going to be an old contender sooner or later. Joe Lewis fought more ex-heavyweight champion than anyone else in the world. Rocky Marciano, he came along and fighting Jersey Joe Walcott and all of them. If you stick around in the heavyweight division, you're going to see more ex-champions than anywhere in the world. Geriatrics rewarded. Yeah, here, here, here we go. George, oldest heavyweight champ of all time. Well, it began for Evander Holyfield with the disappointment in Los Angeles in 1984 when because of, in the eyes of many, an unwarranted disqualification, bronze suddenly turned to gold for the amateur star from Atlanta. And for Evander Holyfield, it's been an uphill fight ever since then. Earlier this week, he sat down with Larry Merchant to talk about his tumultuous career. You've been in so many hard fights. You've had so many honors. You've made so much money. What drives you to keep boxing? To be the champ, to be the best. And once I lost the title in 1992, the Red Bull, you know, I, I was I was gonna quit. You were. I was gonna quit, and I like, but I realized that, you know, I wouldn't be the champ that I said I am if I quit. But in the chase of being the undisputed heavyweight champ of the world again, have allowed my career to come here to 2002. Do you make any concession to time? Any concession to you can't do all the same things at 39 as you could at 29? Well, I, I, I don't believe that. I believe that when there's nothing wrong, when there hasn't been an injury, you have taken care of your body. So you know what you can do. You know, I, I'm realistic about things. Some things I don't want to do no more. What can't you do? It was a lot easier when I was younger because I used to go out dancing all the time. And so dance was a part of my workout. I, I stayed on, on the dance for three to four hours. I, I love dancing, but it had a lot to do with the way I fought. You know, dance is all about rhythm. Boxing is about rhythm. It's about how do you make the adjustment and be in the perfect stand to let your hands go? How do you get back in the stand for defense? Now, because I don't go dance and stuff like that, I have to think and I have to quote myself, I need to get in a rhythm. And I have to remind myself. If you don't win this fight, will you retire? No, I, I will not retire. Uh, uh, because the only way I can lose this fight is for me not to go out and fight. 
And, you know, if it goes to a decision, then the decision may can go either way. And I will have to get back in line if it means getting in line two or three more times, then I will get back in line. So, in effect, you're saying, unless I get beaten up, I'm going to keep going. Well, you know, I'm, I'm never ever going to get beat up. I may get caught with some shot, but I'm not going to get beat up. I never got beaten up. <laughs> Red Bull on the person that came close to doing that, and because she's, you know, that was a fight that made me really like say, I, I don't know if I ever want to go back through that again. Do you sense that people who have come to um, respect, admire, even love you as a prize fighter, are concerned about you somehow? They don't want to see you get hurt. I, I truly believe that people love me, and I know that people are very concerned. But uh, they have to understand that I have to make a decision that, that's right for me. Because when it all comes down, you know, I'm going to have to pay the price if I don't make it. I'm going to pay the price if I do make it. And not this, but it's because this is what made me the man that I am. 17 years and counting, his professional career and ongoing triumph of the will. Larry, is, is Evander Holyfield delusional at this point to think that he can win back the heavyweight championship of the world? Delusional but determined. And once upon a time, that was a potent mix for Evander Holyfield. Remember that epic 10th round in the first of the three fights with Bo when he was battered from pillar to post to pillar? And yet, by the middle of the round, he was doing the battering for Riddick Bow. And when he was asked after the fight, how did it feel like when he was almost knocked out, what he said was, that's when I knew I had him. I had him where I wanted him. And that's pure Evander Holyfield, delusional but determined. And now, once again, he's being battered. Battered with the question, Evander. Why don't you do the decent thing and go off peacefully into that good night of retirement? He has us where he wants us. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's find out tonight if he's got Hasim Rahman where he wants him. And George, what about the choice by Rahman coming off his devastating knockout loss against Lennox Lewis to go up against the cagiest old rat in the barn? <laughs> I think this is a wise choice. Evidently, he's a good manager in mind. I don't know if he's got the best trainer available, but he's decided that, look, I'm going to beat the most famous, renowned boxer around. He knocks Evander Holyfield out, and he's top of the heap again. Wise decision. Right time, the right thing. Exactly the reason why Rachman says he chose to take this fight. He wanted to be right back into the first sentence of consideration for the heavyweight championship. So let's start the countdown to the pageantry now. Tail of the tape between Holyfield and Rachman, and there is one fascinating number here. It's not the age. We know that. Holyfield, 10 years older at 39. They're just about equal in height. A reach advantage of four and a half inches for Rachman. But look at the weight at the bottom. Holyfield, a trim and slim, 216. He's always been in great condition. Rachman fought Lewis in South Africa at 238 pounds. He fought Lewis in Las Vegas at 236 pounds. He fires trainer Adrian Davis, hires Bowie Fisher, who used to train Bernard Hopkins, and enters here at 224. He himself seemed shocked by how low that number is. Punch that numbers, Larry. these days. So you can see, Jim, that Holyfield throws fewer punches these days as a counterpuncher. Rockman is more active generally. Jabs. Rockman figures to throw more jabs under the tutelage of Bowie Fisher, and that's his key to victory. Rules it about with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Evander Holyfield Hassim Rahman fight is scheduled for 12 rounds, non title, using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. The case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. 
All right, as you watch tonight, viewers, we ask you to log on to HBO.com slash boxing. Cast your vote on what you think will be the outcome of next Saturday night's heavyweight championship battle between Lewis and Tyson. We'll give you the results at the conclusion of tonight's telecast. Also, our live trainer audio allows you to choose which trainer and cornerman you want to listen to during tonight's Evander Holyfield, Haseem Rahman fight. And here comes the rock. He had a short and very happy reign as a heavyweight champion, being celebrated by his hometown of Baltimore and doing a lot of celebrating himself. But we have learned that he really was in great turmoil leading up to the rematch with a trainer he didn't speak to for a month and then didn't get a new trainer. And also he revealed to us that he actually fasted on the day of the fight for a Muslim religious holiday. Big mistakes. His idea was that since he could eat after sundown on Ramadan, that he would have time to eat and prepare for the fight, which he did. But nevertheless, in the wake of the easy Lewis knockout, there were numerous questions about uh, Rachman's state of mind coming into the fight, particularly when he revealed that he had been totally at odds with his trainer, Adrian Davis, prior to the fight. Rachman claims that he and Davis did not speak to each other in the five weeks leading to the fight. He says, in fact, that if he hadn't paid Davis in advance, he would have fired him and hired another trainer then. Now he's with Bowie Fisher, who trained Bernard Hopkins to his big victory over Felix Trinidad last year before splitting from Hopkins. Bowie Fisher is an advocate of uh, the manly art of self-defense. He wants Rachman to set up his big punches, not to just wing them. But is it a good idea to bring in a new trainer with new ideas just before an important fight? Typical of many recent American heavyweight stars, Rachman came into the sport late from other experiences as a basketball and football player. And Holyfield says that's his weakness. He's still an amateur. He never learned all the things I learned in my lengthy amateur career. Well, as Rachman put it, they were asking Holyfield whether he was going to retire before he had even put on gloves for the first time. And the continuing life in the ring of Evander Holyfield. Look at that. 22 fights in his career against past or current champions. And that refers not just to his fights in the heavyweight division, but also in the light heavyweight and the cruiserweight division as well. Fight in and fight out the most consistently entertaining fighter in boxing over the course of the past 15 years. In my view, Jim, he's been the best fighter in boxing over that time. I guess the question many of us ask ourselves is, why does a man with nine children, a 55,000 square foot house, with 12 bedrooms and 20 bathrooms, still want to do this? Because it's there. Because he defines himself by this, as a prize fighter, on stage, challenging the best. you've spent your life proving you can do what others said you couldn't, it's hard to give it up. He was a bullion yesterday, as confident and expansive as we've ever seen him, talking at length about his life and his career, and looking toward this with great confidence and assurance that he can once again be the real deal. And now let's go to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the new Boardwalk Hall here in Atlanta.
Atlantic City, New Jersey. As we have a big night of action coming your way, and it's all brought to you by Don King Productions in association with HBO Sports, Valley's Atlantic City, Caesars Atlantic City, and the undisputed king of beers, Budweiser. This map coming away is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Larry Hazard, Commissioner. The Chairman is Jerry Gormley, Board Member Stephen Katz. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this main event from ringside. From New York, Melvina Lathan. From New Jersey, John Stewart. Also from New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. And the third man to the ring, our referee in charge. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Tony Orlando. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing and a heavyweight elimination special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Atlantic City, New Jersey, it's time for the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing to you first on my left he is fighting out of the blue corner entering the ring wearing blue trunks with silver trim hailing from baltimore maryland he weighed in at 224 pounds his record stands at 35 wins three losses 29 big wins coming by way of knockout he is currently ranked the wbc number three contender ladies and gentlemen please welcome the former heavyweight champion of the world Introducing Hasim the Rock Rockman. And his opponent across the ring on my right, ready to fight out of the red corner. Entering the ring wearing red trunks with purple trim, representing his hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. He weighed in at a ready 216 pounds. His record, 37 wins, five losses, two draws, with 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome boxing's true warrior. Here is the one and only four-time heavyweight champion of the world, introducing Evander. Referee in charge now to give instructions. Tony Orlando, 12 rounds of boxing oh, schedule. Okay, gentlemen, you received my instructions in dressing room. Therefore, I expect a clean, professional fight. I want you to watch your heads, watch your low blows. Listen to my commands at all times. I want you to touch gloves, go back to your corner, wait for the bell. Early in his career, Evander Holyfield used to take opponents to the woodshed. Later in his career, he's been trying to take them to school. Yesterday, he indicated that maybe he has to rethink all of this school stuff. So let's see if he tries to recapture some of his youth against a conventional opponent. George, does Rock's new sleek 224-pound body mean that he's definitely going to be boxing, moving, and staying outside? It wouldn't hurt him to box and move, I tell you that. Holyfield is not a good aggressor. He does best when you bring the fight to him. So you want to move around, just step and jab. Step and jab and wait until he make a mistake. He's not able to get away from right hands like he used to. Holyfield has got to make certain that he, if he get hit with anything, it's a left hook because this guy's got nothing on the left hook. It's the right hand you got to be aware of. In his big win over Lewis in South Africa, Rachman threw many jabs by CompuBox numbers 28 per round. In his loss to Lewis in Las Vegas, he was much less active with the jab, and that created new opportunities for Lennox. It's good that Rachman is faster, though. With a little weight off him, he can bounce around every now and then. popping to the body in the first minute. Rockman working the jab upstairs. Holyfield sends an airmail right too long. 
You see, Holyfield, he has his big punches, that left hook to the body. It's too bad he's never been able to get that same power on top with the left hook. Mainly because he's had to reach at big guys, and that's why. But he is being more aggressive step back, step back. than we've seen him in some recent fights. And that's where Rockman can just take his time and let that right hand go if Holyfield decides to step in constantly. Holyfield has got to make certain if this fight goes beyond four rounds and he's laying some good body shots that this guy can hit Rockman. Holyfield sometimes looked slow and lethargic in his three battles with John DeRees. He has so far looked lively and energetic in round one here tonight. Good body work by Rockman right there. As that terrifying left hook that Holyfield tries to get in. Let him go, let him go. Let him go. Step back. Step back out of there. is make Holyfield step forward. If he steps forward trying to jab or throw shots, Rockman can nail him all night. Just don't go after Evander Holyfield. Step around to the side. Stiff left hand by Rockman. Doubling up on the jab there. Rock with a good active showing in the first round. Holyfield mashing him with that left hook inside. Two lands for Holyfield. Rachman came back with a left hand of his own. Holyfield working to the body and Rachman feeling it as round one comes to a close. A hell of a round it was too. What on your head? Turn down. Tell me what that gun. Get that hand out of there quick. Okay. okay. After your combination, you must have your hands in position. Okay? Yeah. And make those circles, you make them fast. All right? Make them fast. Mm -hmm. And they're taking twos and threes, not no big shots. Okay? Uh -huh. And the jab's gonna lead you all the way. Okay? Keep that jab working your home feet, baby. Good job. Use that thing. Make it yeah, easy. Yeah, we go. Respond to that thing. Miguel, take this. Okay? Mm -hmm. You'll be home free, son. CompuBox estimate, I should say CompuBox estimates in round one. Holyfield 14 out of 41. Rockman 20 out of 49. Both guys had their moments. Both guys threw the jab in the neighborhood of 20 times and landed it about 25% of the time. Pretty even looking round by the numbers. Rockman's corner has got him backing up just a little bit, which is good. Evidently, he's got a counter punch as a trainer. A trainer making a counter punch out of it. And the good thing about this fight for Rockman is that Holyfield is fighting like a heavyweight. His big gift used to be he fought like a light heavyweight in a heavyweight title fight. So that his activity level was difficult for some heavyweights to deal with. That's right, but not any longer. As a matter of fact, Rockman is able to sneak in jabs, throw one shot, and Evander is still in the same position. Holyfield waits to counter with that right hand. The contrast you described, Holyfield better as a defender than an attacker, was illustrated in the four fights against Lewis and Tyson. Holyfield beating Tyson twice, a man who would come to him and attack, twice having difficulty with Lewis, who sat back and waited for Evander to attack him. Rockman has better turn on some power now because he's not landing any body shots to take away Holyfield's explosiveness later on in the fight. Work out, work out of there. Good jab to the body. Rockman is being schooled. Whoa, and a right hand on top. That's what you want to do if you're Rockman. Go to the jab to the body. Jab to the body. Make him protect his body and then go on top with your right hand. Not likely to get a chance to get a running start on a right hand here the way he did in knocking come on, come Lewis on. out no. in South Africa. He Work caught out Lewis out. falling asleep. Come on, let go at it. It's the way to go. 
Domination by Holyfield. Rockman again going to the body inside. Let go. All right, break. No punch in. Step back clean. Step back clean. Oh, good jab together. Rockman's got the better of it. Part of Rockman's success in South Africa. He out-jabbed the jabber in the first few rounds against Lewis. That helped to create the tentativeness in Lewis that gave him the chance for the big knockout. The Holyfield will never be tentative. He keeps coming. Break! You hold him. Hold, hold it. Break, break. When I say break, I'll punch him. Rockman didn't like that left hook. That hurt him that time. Round two comes to a close. Next Saturday night, we remind you, heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson finally face off one of the most talked about fights in the past five years. Lewis looking to a win over Tyson to prove once and for all that he's the best of his era. Tyson looking to recapture the magic that made him one of the most exciting, crowd-pleasing heavyweights of all time. Lewis Tyson is on next Saturday night on pay-per-view. And tonight, stick with us after the conclusion of this fight when we'll have a conversation with Lennox Lewis from Memphis, where he has arrived in preparation for the big fight. Tyson, incidentally, has also arrived and settled in in Memphis, Tennessee. Jabs working good. Watch the big right hand. Deep breath now. Deep breath now. Give me a big one. Come on, give me a big one. Bump him hard. Make it work. The boardwalk setter. Totally refurbished, beautiful facility. It's not entirely new. It's built within the shell of the old Atlantic City Convention Center, but uh, a, a far more glamorous environment than used to be the case. And uh, big crowd here tonight to watch Evander Holyfield in what may be the twilight of his career. That was a right Rockman. hand. That was a right hand that hurt Rockman. And he picked Evander Holyfield up by the legs to conceal it. Better make sure he get his, he his head up out of there. Holyfield connected with the left hook inside, too. And now Rockman starts to back away, and Holyfield nails him with a right cross. Holyfield pushing Rockman into the corner. Holyfield trying to peel the years away, fighting as aggressively as he is. Can he sustain it? Break. One thing Step about back. throwing that Step many back. punches, and you're not the bigger guy as Holyfield is, you need a rest. You gotta take a breather for a second, and that's when Rockman should jump right back on him. You gotta make him pay as soon as he throws five punches, right, get Greg, back on, on it. Ever since the middle of career of his career, Evander Holyfield, despite his extraordinary conditioning, has often fought in spurts, 20, 30 seconds at a time, then back Break. off, Step seemingly back. needing back. to regain his energy. Well, he's basically a middleweight built up with fine conditioning and weightlifting and good nutrition. Some of these guys are naturally big. All they are are just big. Their feet are big, their heads are big. And they, when you throw three, three shots at them, you get tired. So you're saying the Holyfield size is self-manufactured rather than natural. But you know, in the, everybody should be manufactured like that by themselves. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> And what about the notion that he wasn't really a big heavyweight puncher, George? Well, he had he made up for it in a big heart. Heavyweights, no matter how big they are, they can't take these big hearts. Here you go! Nah, nah, come on. I was holding, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. First minute of the round was big for Evander Holyfield. Now in the second minute of the round, his pace has slowed, and Rockman is back into it. Yeah, Holyfield was able to land some punches, but it took more out of him than it did Rockman. Come on, work out of there. Let's After go. he Come finished on. beating Rockman up, Rockman came, pushed him into the corner, and started hitting him back. Good left inside by Holyfield. Dig into the rib cage again. Seem Rockman has a strong body. Evander Holyfield seems determined to test it as no other fighter has. And Rockman is uh, an ex football player, too. Those football players, they're accustomed to bumping shoulders with people, and running hold it, hold into it, them, whether they, and they don't get hurt. Yeah, but they're not accustomed to being whacked in the belly and the liver. Nobody is. <laughs> they whack you in the liver in the football, in the belly, too. <laughs> 
Way to straighten it out. Put the leg up. Put the leg up. Rock, baby, you laying too far away. Let this guy lead. You need to lead, son. Okay? Please relax a little bit. Relax a little bit. Give me your thing to tweed before you do that. Tweed, and later on we'll start loading up. You can hook your feet move under here. You hit him three or four times in a row. Your hook will eat him up. Your hook will eat him up, but watch that right hand because he's still right there. Against the limited John Ruiz, Holyfield was smothered, and you never or rarely saw him in this kind of attitude in the ring against a more conventional fighter like Rahman, a boxer puncher who wants to give and take. He can operate, and Evander Holyfield is operating. CompuBox numbers in round three, a big round for Holyfield in the power punching category. Holyfield 18 out of 28 in power punches in round three, including many body shots early in the round, which seemed to take something out of Rachman. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim, was I hurt to say Evander Holyfield couldn't pull the trigger? Man, I tell you, in the second and the third round, Evander Holyfield pulled the trigger. Two rounds to one, 29-28 Evander Holyfield. Sensational left hooks, good right hands by Evander Holyfield, clean punches that the judges couldn't miss, winning rounds two or three. Rackman, the busier guy in the first round. Yeah, every time he's gone out into the fight, Holyfield, his corner has said to him, just watch the right hand. He believes, apparently, that the only way he can lose to Rockman is with that right hand. And Rockman doesn't throw a left hook. And right now, if he can avoid it, it looks like he can have a heck of a night. You know, earlier this evening, I spoke off camera to a guy who fought both of them, Lennox Lewis. I said, who do you like tonight? He said, I got a hunch on the old man tonight. He said, logic says Rockman. Something in my heart tells me Evander will be big tonight. So far, Lennox is right. All right, break. Step back. Uh, let's be careful, guys. Come on. He talked about Evander Holyfield watching that right hand, but he's not doing much of moving away from it at all. As a matter of fact, I find him in harm's way most of the time. It's just that Rockman is not getting off with that right hand. Evander's so proud of his ability to roll with punches. He thinks he can roll from anything, but he got nailed with the right hand right there. There it is again. Uppercut lands for Holyfield. Rockman has landed the right hand four times in the round. Rockman has got to know that when Holyfield starts leaning in like that, he may be hurt. Don't think he's looking for a leverage. Vander starts trying to go back to the body to slow Rockman's attack upstairs. There's another vicious left hook to the ribcage by Holyfield. Watch your head, gentlemen. This is when Rockman should be fighting. This guy cannot throw five shots and then do anything after. Holyfield throws three good shots. He's got to take his breath. Well, there goes the dancing, bobbing, counter-punching, and weaving Rockman. He's gone now as Rockman leans in and slugs with Evander on the inside. Now, I don't know why, but he's right, not right, opening right, up. I right, thought right, the 200 right. and what, 24 pounds should have been a little better for him to move around and catch Holyfield when he backs up like Maybe that. Maybe the body shots have taken the foot movement away. <laughs> Holyfield is throwing roundhouses. All of that benefits Rockman because it takes so much out of him. Holyfield busting Rockman on the top of the head with the right hand. Rock looking to set up another right cross before the round ends. You got a lot more weapons. You got to focus. You gotta don't stay go focused. focused. Come on, you gotta, don't get off your jab. You started getting off your jab that round, and that's why he is able to take you to ropes and throw the right hand. Don't get off your jab. Keep your left hand high and keep your head moving. Your best aim. Oh, it's nothing, that elbow. but it's a cut. Oh, it's it's the, nothing, but, but it's a cut. Elbow, so but it's a cut. Okay. Right. But that I was a headbutt. That was a headbutt. And the well, elbow. Rock, we knew it was coming. We can't hide behind that. All right, that was their straight right hand. You can see that the way Holyfield tries to defend the right hand sometimes is with, with his right across the top. And just as he did in South Africa, but with less effect, Rahman threaded through 
his defense. Meanwhile, you saw the referee, Tony Orlando, and the ring doctor in Rachman's corner to examine what appears to be a nick over Rachman's left eye. You heard the discussion, and apparently Orlando agreeing that the nick must have come from a headbutt rather than a punch. Not sure how he knows, but that seemed to be the determination. Rachman complained as soon as he was hit, but it, they ran heads together. He complained. The referee knew about it. Rockman has got to get back on his jab. Don't worry about the right hand. Let the right hand come to you. Left hook by Holyfield after a right hand by Rockman. Great. Step back. Step back. Good level. Good level. Energy levels just about equal in there. No. Ten year age gap not showing up so far. Great. An old man has no right to be fighting this way. We got to get some of Evander Holyfield's DNA and implant it in a few other heavyweights. There you go. <laughs> now you go. Rockman is successful with his jabs. Holyfield misses with a roundhouse left. Watch your head. Come on, keep the head out of there. All right, break, break, break. This is a real courageous and brave fight by Rockman, being that he was just stopped by another champion not too long ago. He's coming back like he's never been off. Yesterday, Hasim Rockman said, I don't just want to win. I want to look good in the fight. I want it to be a great fight. I want people to be interested in what I'm doing in there. I don't need to knock him out. I just need to make a big impression in this fight. He can do that if he, whenever Evander Holyfield lands three shot, keep his hand up, he can get him with four afterwards because Evander's not in a position to defend himself after he throws four punches. I Hard right hand by Rachman. Busted Holyfield on the chin. Evander again shows his enormous ability as he's shown throughout his career to take a punch. He's always been able to take. You just don't want to take too many of them. For the first time in the fight, there are subtle signs that Holyfield is slowing down just a bit. More and more frequently, he throws one punch at a time instead of backing Whoa. up the punch with a combination. There's another right big right hand. Another big right hand by The Rock. Evander with his own right hand. Don't count me out yet, he says. Saturday night on pay-per-view, it's Lennox Lewis versus Mike Tyson and a long way to match up for the heavyweight championship. June 22, HBO pay-per-view, the rematch of 2000's Fight of the Year when Eric Morales takes on Marco Antonio Barrera in a 126-pound showdown. And on June 29 on HBO, heavyweight Vladimir Klitschko continues his quest for a possible title shot. Klitschko will do battle with the always tough Ray Mercer. HBO, the heart and soul of boxing. Keep me your right hand high, okay? Give me that faint. Give me that faint. Walk it to the left. Something Keep the right hand high. Keep bumping. Don't stand in front of him. You don't need to. This guy leans don't all over. Come on, let's go. Get back on again. One more time, the big weapon of Rockman. A straight right hand. Box numbers in round five. Both fighters threw fewer than 40 punches. The base begins to slow just a little bit. Holyfield landing 15. Rockman landing 16. Very even round. Harold Letterman scoring the fight. Fairly even so far. Round six of a schedule 12. Holyfield has better make sure if he's gonna throw a right hand, he better come back with a left hook because if he stays out there, this guy will beat him with the right. Big right hand by Holyfield. Sets up two left including an uppercut that knocks Rachman back. Holyfield sensing the moment. Another big left hook upstairs. Rachman not yet punching back. Now the Rock starts to throw. A break. Step back, step back. Now Rachman has got to start throwing punches. After Holyfield throws five shots, he's no good. That's why you see him holding right now. Rachman has got to start throwing shots. 
Well said, George. Holyfield taking one of those breathers now after the big offensive right. rally. Set back, set back. This is Rockman's chance to come right back at him. But Rock is letting that yeah, moment hold him. pass. Let's hold him. Let him go. Let him go. You don't get many moments in these big fights like this when you got punches. You got to take advantage of them while they're there. And if you've watched Evander Holyfield at all over these past eight years, you know there's usually a lull after the storm. That's your opportunity. Whoa. Rock with a straight right. Now he doesn't even know. He's not even aware that he's hurting. He had a big smile on his face as he, just after he landed that. I got you, old guy. Now go back to your jab if you're Rockman. Just keep the jab going. He always gets the best of the jab. Break. Step back, step back. Gentlemen, watch your heads. <laughs> they trade jabs there, and Holyfield out jabs Rockman two to one. Come on, step back, please. Well, that referee is going to have a lot of work on his hand tonight. Rockman is doing the counter punching now. Break! Step back, step back. Come on, work out. Let's go, let's go. Watch your head, Evander. Watch your head. Over and over and over. Rockman with the one, two. Right, break, one, two. Watch your head. Jab, right, cross. As George pointed out at the top of the show, or at the beginning of the fight, I should say, Rockman doesn't do much with the left hook. Oh, if you're gonna if you hold the field, you just, just stay around on that left side. Stay around on that left side. If he stays on Rockman's left arm, he's just he's out of harm's way all night. No. Seconds. Don't go. Don't. Don't, don't stop. Don't get passive. The last 20 seconds. Don't do that. Okay. You want to hustle that last 20 seconds. You understand? Okay. When you hit him with a one-two like you did, hit him with three more punches right now. That's right. That's right. Very good, Rock. Hey, yeah, dude. Take that. Read it. Read one. Don't let him on that left side, Rock. Even inside, Rock. Don't let him on your left side. He gets your side, he's going to headbutt you and look for the hook. Early in the round, Holyfield did some serious business. Did it carry him through the round and earn him the 10-9? How even could this fight be? CompuBox numbers in the sixth. They both landed 19 punches. They both threw right about 40. Holyfield 39, Rockman 40. Crowd oohs and dahs again. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> okay, Jim, I agree. I got it all even. 57, 57, three rounds apiece. Harsim Rockman came back and, you know, he Break. rides a van to Holyfield across the ring. He used to do that very early in his career. He's real good at it. Just like George Foreman said, he leaves that shoulder into you and whacks you with the free hand. A van to Holyfield can't, you know, can't ride Rockman across the ring because Rockman's stronger. But in round six, a van, I think, stole it with that early rally. So three rounds apiece. I have the same score. What I can understand is Rockman is so successful with his left jab and he hardly throws it. Now these jabs he can't miss. Maybe he doesn't want to get hit by that right hand, George. No, he's in no harm as long as he's throwing that left jab. Nothing is going to happen to him. And you heard Rockman's corner echoing George Foreman saying, don't let him get around on your left side. George pointing out, as he has, that if Foreman is on Rockman's left side, he's safe. Right, right. Rock Stay doesn't back. use the left hook. Holyfield should do good to stay to the left. But evidently, he has problem moving to, to his right, Holyfield does. He doesn't like to do it. And if you move to his left, he doesn't have problem. He can't see you well.
with that successful left jab. And there's a big left hook by Holyfield. Stops Rockman in his tracks. Left to the body. Left hook upstairs. Holyfield trying to attack and seal the deal. Rockman comes back. Now Rockman has got to pour it on. This is his time to pour it on. Looked like a big swelling on Rockman's head. There is a huge knot on Rockman's head above his left eye. That's what the doctors were getting ready to look at a couple rounds ago, obviously. Head, That's, That's what came from the bump. That's another bump. Step back, step back. Let him go, let him go. Can you imagine Holyfield has him up against the ropes, throwing a lot of shots, and has Holyfield holding on? That's what you want. Make him throw those shots. All right, break. Come on. Flander, keep that head. Right, so you think the lump on Rockman's head came from another butt, George? Yeah, they've been, they've been bumping heads all night. I can't. How distracting is it to Rockman to have something like this? Well, this is his moment of truth. He can't even let anything distract him now. He's got to go for it. Yeah, he's feeling it. He's feeling it. You see him rubbing it with the glove. And Holyfield hits it with the right hand. That's about as nasty a bump as I've ever seen above a fighter's eye, almost on the forehead. There it is. You can work with that, though. If you're a good corner man, you can work with that. Miguel Diaz. That's about as good a corner man as yeah. you'll find right there working you on it. You can work with that because there's no chance to blow your nose, but that, that thing is moving up there. Let's see where they butted. Well, there are two fighters fighting at close quarters coming in at each other. Holy oh, that is. There it is, right on the spot. Yep. Holyfield is a rough fighter, not a dirty fighter. When you fight him at close quarters, get ready. Almost anything goes. Well, various opponents throughout. Evander's career have complained that he butted, but most ringside experts agree Evander doesn't seem to try to foul on purpose. It's just the way he fights. He's there, he's coming. If you go inside with him, it's going to be rough. Let's keep our eye on it and see if that's true. Determine a winner. The doctors. 
Yeah, the doctor said to Rachman, the bump isn't dangerous, but if you can't see, the fight should stop. And Rahman said something to the effect that it was affecting his eyesight, and that's why they stopped the fight. Harold Letterman, your take on this. Okay, Jim, I got to tell you what may determine this fight. Now, this is a guess, but I think it's an educated guess. When you stop a fight in the middle of the round, you have to score the round in which the fight is stopped. Now, obviously, Evander Holofield wins round eight, 10 to nine. This might be a big factor in this thing. I mean, I've got it right now. Uh, five rounds to three in favor of Holofield. I mean, because of the fact that he won that eighth round. Rachman did nothing but, but protect the, uh, the, the lump in the eighth round. Now, as far as the corner goes, Miguel Diaz was using an end swell. When you get a lump like that, you gotta have an ice bag ready. You have, just like he has on it right now. You gotta have a big ice bag. But between round seven and eight, he used the end swell. Wrong way to treat that. George, you're, uh, you're satisfied they're doing exactly the right thing with this because exactly of the Exactly the right thing. I think this is more than fair. Go to the scorecard. This guy cannot continue. It was an accidental hit, but this is going to be a fair decision. Here's the butt once again. That's the clash of heads which produced the swelling. That's the second one. You can see the swelling begin immediately after that clash of heads. I mean, the swelling has already begun within seconds there after the clash of heads you saw in that replay. And yes, you're right, George. That was the second one. Yeah. That was not the one which occasioned the doctor's it, first visit over to Rockman's Corner a little bit earlier. There's got to be something seriously wrong with that eye to have that kind of swelling. I saw that in a fight between Randall Bailey and Daner Julio in Miami two years ago on the undercard of Felix Trinidad against Mamadou Tiam. And later I had a chance to ask Bailey how much it bothered him. And he said, you know, I wasn't really all that conscious of it during the fight. He said, when I got to the locker room afterward, I couldn't believe it because I looked, you know, misshapen as though my face had completely changed. Yeah, you don't have a mirror when you're out there in the ring. So you just have to guess. Yeah, that Rock, Rock has no way of knowing exactly how that feels, but he's been touching it with his gloves, but of course he can't feel anything can't through his it. gloves. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're totaling up the scorecards here to see if Evander Holyfield has gotten a huge and rejuvenating win in his career, albeit the impact of the win may be diminished by the circumstances under which he gets it, right, George? That's right, and that's good that they got a similar promoter. That means a rematch. It was a good fight. It deserves a rematch. It was a good fight. It was a great matchup that was bringing out terrific stuff from both fighters. Do or die. Each fighter's had to produce tonight, or he's out of the picture. Maybe the scorecards will be even. <laughs> that wouldn't hurt anything either. A grinning Don Turner above us. And uh, Turner's probably smiling because of the performance of his fighter, Evander Holyfield, who looked like a lively young Colt in there much of the time. Oh, yeah, he was fighting like a big super heavyweight, not fighting like the little light heavyweight without any weight. He's well, I guess toe -to -toe. he's finally settled into this thing, huh? Yeah, I guess he said, look, I'm not going to lose weight. I'm not going down. I'm a heavyweight. <laughs> 116 pounds and looking like a sleek, customized roadster. And tonight with some new gas in the tank. Caution about the head from the beginning. That was one of our concerns from the beginning. One question Rachman will have to answer for himself and for others after the fight. Why did he agree to fight Evander Holyfield at close quarters rather than to stay outside, box him, and use his jab? Did he have a choice, George? I think that he was doing the right kind of fight. This bump just kind of messed things up to hit, but this guy was able to withstand Holyfield's combinations and then come back. But later on, I mean, the hit button, you mix that into the, get that into the mix, and then things don't, don't go well. Well, Tyson in particular was one fighter who complained that Holyfield butts. Um, have you ever seen it intentionally? Well, he seemed to go to the same spot all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go guy. to Jimmy Lennon Jr. to see what the official scorecard said. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped at one minute, 40 seconds in round number eight due to an accidental headbutt. Our physician at ringside ruling that Rockman, suffering from a severe hematoma is unable to continue. Therefore, we go to the scorecards.
Judge at ringside, Steve Weisfeld scores about 69 to 64 in favor of Evander Holyfield. <laughs> Judge at ringside, Melvina Lathan scores about 67 to 66 in favor of Hasim Rahman. <laughs> Judge at ringside, John Stewart scores about 69 to 64 in favor of the technical decision winner, Evander, the real deal, Holyfield. Harold Letterman, you said they had to score the eighth round. You have to score the partial round. They were entirely wrong. Now listen to me. If you score, if you could knock a guy down 15 times or something like that in the eighth round, you got to get credit for those knockdowns. You must score the partial round, period. And I know those rules inside and out. I would question Commissioner Larry has it about the eighth round. However, it's a moot point, isn't Correct. it? It is Because Holyfield Holy exactly. would have won the eighth by all logic, With, and the decision would have remained the same. Correct. Absolutely correct. <laughs> Harold Ledham had Holyfield winning. And there are the judges' scorecards. Melvina Lathan with Rachman on top, Stewart and Weisfeld both with Holyfield on top. Even if all three judges were to have scored the eighth round for Rachman, it would still be a Holyfield victory by majority decision. Or by split decision, I should say. <coughs> split technical decision, to be totally accurate about it. Let's go to Larry Merchant, standing by with the man who has now taken the bitter end of this one, Asim Rachman. All right, thank you very much, Jim. Rock, the doctor said to you at the end, you could continue if it doesn't interfere with your eyesight. How was it interfering with your sight? Every time he would jab me, I thought I saw the jab come one way and it hit me somewhere else. And I know he ain't had that much movement on his jab. So when I went to block the jab, I was way, way off. I couldn't really see it coming. And uh, I mean, he was headbutting me from, from round one. What, what did you say? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. He was headbutting me from round one. All right, but what, what do you recall about the headbutt that put that knot uh, above your left eye? I think uh, I, I pointed right out to the um, referee when he did it. He just came in, lunged him with his head. Every time I would throw a right hand, he'd um, drop his level and, and rush me with his forehead. I mean, you know, that's, that's just part of it. That's just another weapon he has, you know. I'm fighting against two hands, a head, and All elbow. Right, let's, let's take a look at the headbutt. I'm sorry, we don't have a monitor here. We'll try to get a monitor so that you can see it and describe it. Tell us about the fight up until that time. Was he more active than you anticipated? No, I thought he was going to be active for the first, you know, uh, for the first half of the fight. Uh, then I thought he was slow down because I think he was going to come out being as though he thought I got, I got, I mean, as though he knew I got stopped in my last fight. I thought he would come out and try to end it early. But the fight is 12 rounds. I know, you know, I, I was going to have to pick the pace up in the later round and, and go for the knockout. But uh, you were hitting him with your right hand, weren't you? Yeah, I felt like I was going to start hitting him more and more with the right hand because some rounds I would throw, some rounds I wouldn't. So I ain't just want him to catch a beat on it. And then I would just start picking it up, picking it up, picking it up at the last round. All right, you said before the fight, if you lost this, you didn't see how you could remain in contention, but you fought a good fight. Do you still feel that you can go out of your career on a fight like this? Definitely, I don't feel Evander Holyfield beat me. I don't feel like, you know, it was a, it was a fair fight, and I don't think it was an official fight. You know, uh, I think the fight, you know. I, so you'll be back? I mean, if I could be back with Evander, I'd like to set the record straight. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to want to fight again. But uh, if he does, you know, I just got prepared for the head buzzer. Well, you know, how it looks on tape. I didn't think he could do as much damage with his head uh, that he really do. He must have got a metal plate in there or something because I don't remember some, nobody doing this much damage with a punch. Thank you very much, Rock. Jim, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Larry. Rock makes a good point. It's conceivable, to me at least, that uh, Holyfield might look around for a chance to get at one of those belts uh, quicker than to, to go in and have to fight Rockman again, but Rockman deserves a rematch. It ought to happen. Yeah, I don't think this fight didn't happen and didn't end the way Evander Holyfield and Rockman Rockman should want history to rec record it. It should be a rematch. It should be in another place. They should have a chance to settle it fair and square. It wasn't settled right this time at all. From an entertainment standpoint, it was shaping up as a much better fight than some of us might have expected it to be. No, I don't think we're going to see many heavyweight fights like this. These Holyfield were throwing punches like he was 21. 
he'd get tired, but then he'd throw 21 more. <laughs> <laughs> Larry stands by now with 39-year-old winner, Evander Holyfield. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Evander. I guess you're not going into retirement. <laughs> well, you know, either way the decision went, I wasn't going in retirement. Uh, you know, like I said, my goal is to be the honest with the heavyweight champion of the world. And, you know, patient is, is you know, key to being successful. When you, he said you were butting him from the beginning of the fight, but was there a particularly hard collision of heads that raised that knot on his head? Well, no, no, I, I don't think so. I was hitting with you know, every right hand I threw, I would hit him uh, across the temple with it because he wasn't able to get his hands up. And, you know, he, he actually lead in with his head. What, what I do, I put my head on the chest where I can put it on that side or either that side. And so his whole thing, when he get ready to punch hard, he lead with his head. And, you know, it's not that I will force my head because if I will force it, I will move my head. If you you look, I put my head on the left, I put it on the right to keep him from hitting my head. All right, we're going to take a look at that particular butt because it raised the the ugliest knot on a head that I ever saw. All right, let's go to the monitor. Describe what you see. Right, but you know, I throw right hand, I hit him with the short left hook and another right. And see, that is where we, we did hit here there. And, but but, but I'm, I'm, I'm hitting him with shots anyway. And I, and I hit him red right on it, you know. So you're saying that, yes. It, it, yes, it, it was a headbutt. It, that shot was a headbutt. You know, you can see as clear as day. Ain't no sense. Yeah, but all. but you aggravated it a little bit with your punching. Well, well you know, I was hitting with them shots each and every time. You know, uh, uh, a lot of times people don't realize that when two fighters come to fight and they stand in there, you know, all right. you, you made a very interesting observation before this fight to us, Evander, in which you said in the old days you just go out and fight and you weren't worried about anything. But lately you were sort of taking guys to school and trying to be so perfect that maybe that wasn't such a good idea to be that perfect anymore. And so it seemed that you fought with a little bit more of the old abandon tonight. Is that accurate? Well, well, you know, today, you know, uh, he he put himself in a position where I can hit him with shots because he swung such a hard shots. He's all bounding each and every time to swing, so he eased the com combination, goes to the body and the heads like that, you know. Which, you know, I you know, I felt very comfortable and I was able to get my hands off and I was able to bring the joy back into the game of box instead of just trying. Well, I got to knock the guy out with one big shot. I realized there are combination of shots and eventually get him. So because basically for a lot of the fight, you two guys were just standing within arm's length. You were able to practice what you do best. Well, well you see, what, that's what happened with guys that don't have the experience. They can't outbox you. Then once they find themselves getting in sight, then they find that they can't outslug you. So they're in trouble either, either, either thing that they do. Did any of his punches daze you, hurt you? Well, no, no, he, he's those strong shots, but the, the ultimate thing is to get away from the big shots. And so I know that he hit hard, but, you know, it's not for me to stand there, you know, to grade him. What is this fight? mean to you to be able to fight in this fashion uh, to to tell all of the naysayers once again here I am I had you where I wanted you and I proved you wrong again well you know it's just you know like like the record that I came out don't say what God won't do you know I trust in the Lord you know my help to strengthen and, and I'm willing to work harder you know uh, a lot of people look at it just just natural I, I work harder than, than than the young guys and the older guys and stuff and I pressure my crowd all right what do you think will be next do you want to challenge the uh, winner of the Johnson uh, Ruiz fight, or would you rather, if it, the uh, opportunity presents itself, to fight Bird for another title? Do you care how it falls? Well, you know, of course, you know, I, I'd rather fight. I write. I'd rather fight the winner of uh, Lennox and Tyson. But if that if, if that don't happen, then you know, uh, we put the WBA title. I, uh, I'd rather fight uh, that fight. You know, I, you know, the Bird the Bird style just ain't the style that you know I would like to compete against. Not because. You know, I don't feel that I can just, I just feel that it will be a very taxing fight because, you know, his fighting style. Thank you very much, Amanda. Congratulations one more time. Jim? All right, thank you, Larry. Stick with us. Still to come, a conversation with Lennox Lewis as he looks ahead to next week. Final copy box numbers from this one. Evander Holyfield landing 11 more punches. Rachman throwing 16 more. They both land at a fairly high connect percentage. Those stats pretty even, given that CompuBox, as you know, is necessarily an estimate rather than an exact count. Power punches. Holyfield landing 31 more and throwing 30 more than Rachman as the fight was mostly fought at Holyfield's preferred range rather than the one at which we thought at least that Rachman might have had 
a better chance to outbox Evander. Earlier this evening, we invited all of you to contact our HBO Boxing website and to give us your feelings on what would be the outcome of next Saturday night's Lewis Tyson fight. 26% of you, Lewis KO. 26%, Lewis by disqualification. Even, interesting. 21% Lewis by decision, all and all. 73% pick Lewis. 16% Tyson KO. 11% pick a draw, which is kind of fascinating because Mike Tyson hasn't gone 12 rounds in a fight since the summer of 1991. But a lot of you are paying attention to that because nobody, nobody voted for Mike Tyson to win a decision over Lennox Lewis. So that much, I guess almost everybody can agree upon, but that's part of the excitement of the fight, right? The suspense every moment as to whether Lewis's chin is going to give way to one of Tyson's shots. Well, earlier this evening, I had a chance to talk to Lennox Lewis, seven days removed from the biggest date in his boxing career, and just a couple days after his arrival in Memphis. Here's how he looked as he talked about his upcoming big night. Lennox, among the news in the past week, stories which indicate that ticket sales are not what they were expected to be at first, and that the economic destiny of what was supposed to be the biggest money event in boxing history may not be as clear as we thought it was. Now that you're there on the ground in Memphis, are you going to promote this fight? Are you going to try to sell it a little more? Or are you just going to sit back and wait for the fight? I think this fight uh, doesn't really need too much sale. Everybody wants to see this fight. This is a fight that the public wanted to see for such a long time. And now it's here and, and you know, everybody's really excited about it. Especially when I arrived in Memphis, uh, they showed me so much love. And they're really up for the fight and they're really excited for the fight. And I know my friends around the world are very excited about the fight. So I don't think this, this fight will have any problem selling. Aren't you concerned that because of the World Cup, which now conflicts with this new date for the fight, that your English supporters won't be there in the numbers that you might originally have expected? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely will affect the fight a little bit because, uh, you know, the, the British supporters, European supporters are very, very big on football. But, uh, you know, you have that, those avid boxing fans that's still going to make it. Have you gotten over your concern about whether the fight will actually take place and are you now in a position where you can focus totally on the expectation that he's really going to be in the, there in the ring with you next Saturday night? Yes, I'm, I'm definitely uh, expecting him to be in the ring with me next Saturday night. Looking forward to the fight, uh, very focused and ready. When he says things like, I want my fist to make contact with Lennox's brains, I want to knock his brains out of his head. When his assistant trainer says, we want to find a way to crack his skull, break his ribs, kill him if possible in the ring. What does that make you think? It makes me think that maybe he doesn't think he's going to be in the ring with the, the champion himself. I'm not going to be sitting back just twiddling my thumbs. He's got to watch out definitely for me. If he's, if he's concerned about himself, he's definitely not concerned about me, so he should be concerned about me because I'm very serious. I'm coming in there to win. It's an observation of many boxing experts that there are two Lennox Lewises. There's the cautious Lennox Lewis who went in and fought a self-protective fight, even against lesser fighters like Zelko Mavrovich. And then there's the attacking Lennox Lewis who went in and blew people like Galata and Grant and Rockman in the second fight away. Do you have to be the second Lennox Lewis? Do you have to be the attacker to have your best chance against Mike? You know, I'm, I'm a pugilist specialist, so I go in there, uh, going in there to win. You know, if an opportunity presents itself, I'm definitely going to take Mike Tyson out. You know, he's talking about taking me out. Uh, you better be careful that I'm going to take him out. How different does this event feel in scope, you know, as a total, total experience than any other fight you've ever been in? Well, for me, it's just like another fight to me. You know, who's Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson needs to prove himself. He's been boxing against lesser opponents, really. You know, uh, his last opponent, they wouldn't even, uh, HBO wouldn't even allow me to fight him. So I'm saying, okay, now he's in against the best. He's never seen a boxer like Lennox Lewis, so he's in for a big surprise. All right, thanks very much for uh, your self-expression. We appreciate your confidence, of course. Lennox Lewis, you heard it, saying it's just another fight, but certainly to boxing fans, that isn't the case. Next Saturday night, live on pay-per-view from the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee, Lennox Lewis defends the heavyweight champion against Mike Tyson trying to win it for a third time. Well, they always sound good in those interviews. What do you make of Lennox's body language as you uh, get ready for next week, George? Well, he sounds very confident. That's awful confident. But then Mike Tyson sounds pretty confident himself. So <laughs> if confidence is going to win it, they won't have a draw. Do you think either man is really fearful of or intimidated by the other? 
you got to be intimidated by Mike Tyson just a little bit when you see him across that ring because you may go to your corner and the stool may be flying at your head. So you don't worry about the guy physically beating you, but what else could he make? He may kick you. He got no rules. He has no rules in his mind at all. He can break them all. No way to completely eliminate that distraction. Perhaps that's one of the biggest challenges that faces Lewis as he gets ready for that. Larry, your final thoughts about uh, next week, what you heard from Lennox there, and what happened in the ring between Evander and Rock? Well, next week, uh, by now, I'm just hoping for the biggest surprise of all, which is just a good fight. It's going to happen. Let's hope that it's uh, something that uh, we'll all be happy with the outcome, with the fact that uh, two fighters gave their best in the ring just with their fists and their minds and their hearts. Fists, minds, hearts. That's Evander Holyfield. He's the greatest fighter of his time, a remarkable old geezer who showed you tonight why he has fooled so many people for so long. For a decade, they've been saying, Evander, you're not a really heavyweight. When are you going to retire? He had us where he wanted us. Once again, even though it wasn't against the greatest fighter out there, he gave the kind of spirited effort that he has no right to make. At this, at this stage of his career. Absolutely yeah. right. And the month of the heavyweights is underway in boxing with some exciting action here, an unusual ending, maybe not overwhelmingly satisfying, but certainly the performance of the two fighters up to that moment was. We'll have a final word on the Rockman Holyfield activity. Let's look ahead to some upcoming programs on HBO. Sunday, join HBO for one of our biggest nights of the year. At 8, the third season finale of the hit series, The Sopranos. We're starting a new regime around here! At 9, the season finale of Six Feet Under, the show TV Guide calls a Sunday night sensation. God, I so don't want to say this. I have a serious problem. And at 10, it all leads up to the premiere episode of HBO's newest dramatic series, The Wire. How'd you get this on tape? It's not tape. That's live, brother. Live. Three big shows, one big night. Sunday starting at 8, only on HBO. Give me some kind of sign. Oh, my baby, show me that you're mine. Oh, yeah. Give me some kind of sign. Oh, my baby. All signs are go for an all-new season of Artists, premiering Sunday, June 16th on HBO. Thursday night, check out On the Record with Bob Costas. Each week you'll find Bob with special guests from the sports world and big names from the entertainment industry. Among the guests next week, Oscar De La Hoya and Chris Rock. On the Record premieres each Thursday at 10.30 p.m. June 18, Sports of the 20th Century brings you Three Seconds from Gold, an inside look at one of the most controversial events in Olympic history. The United States lost to the Soviet Union in the 1972 Olympic basketball gold medal game. Earlier tonight, from Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, Evander Holyfield and Hasim Rahman fought a pitched battle with each other into the eighth round. But because of a headbutt which caused a giant swelling above Rahman's eye, they went to the scorecards. Technical decision. Holyfield wins. Next on HBO, stay tuned for Six Feet Under on the East Coast and the premiere of Shrek. It's great. Don't miss it on the West Coast. So now for our entire HBO crew, I'm Jim Lampley saying good night from Atlantic City. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Rick Bernstein. Tonight's edition of World Championship Boxing was produced by John Crystal and directed by Mark Payton. Associate producer, birthday boy, Israel De Herrera. Happy birthday, Izzy. Feature producers, Greg Backer, Pete Radovic, Lily Rosenberg, Max Siegel, and Dave Schwartz. Assistant to the producer, Greg Stern and Abteen Motia. Production manager, Mike Davies. Technical supervisor, Bob Hunter. And the technical director was Doug Getz.
This has been a presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions.